Hi. Happy First Day Friday! Happy First Day Friday! And Happy St. Patrick's Day! Saint Top Patrick's of the morning Day. to ya! Is it morning? It's, it's an expression. Anyhow, uh, welcome to St. Patrick's Day! We wore our green. I would have worn my green fur, but green fur is gross. I'm just I kidding. Wore, I wore my best Irish outfit here. I wore the only green shirt that would fit over all of my feathers in my collection. And uh, something that I've been uh, planning uh, or thinking about planning for, for a long time now is uh, doing a uh, retrospective of uh, Best Picture Oscar winners uh, and whether or not they deserved uh, to win. I think uh, they deserve nothing. Those Oscars are such a grouch. Green! He's green! He is, he is. <laughs> well, uh, I had put together a list a long time ago. Uh, in fact, uh, I just had to update it with the last few years. They can't go make uh, a list. But uh, yeah, uh, there have been several movies that have won Best Picture that, uh, you know, uh, the runners up uh, probably deserve more. A uh, couple of examples uh, just from looking at uh, the list a little while ago. Uh, the Wizard of Oz uh, didn't win Best Picture. And uh, famously, Star Wars didn't win Best Picture. Oh. But both were nominated, but did not win. Later retitled Star Wars A New Hope. Yes, indeed. Episode 4. Yes. Uh, but yeah, uh, th those two are, are a couple of many movies uh, that were nominated for Best Picture. Uh, another famous one being uh, the animated Beauty and the Beast movie, which may or may not be the only animated movie ever to be nominated for Best Picture. Uh, I believe after that, uh, Best Animated Feature became a an award of its own. So uh, yeah, uh, because of that movie scaring the uh, the the Oscar committee into thinking that uh, perhaps uh, something of a lesser thing of animation, according to them, could possibly have won the big award, uh, they were like, "Oh, let's make let's make sure this never happens and give them their own category." So yeah, that that's why uh, there's a best animated feature uh, category is because of that. Uh, Hopefully someday, uh, you know, things will change, but uh, I don't see it happening anytime soon, sadly. Uh, but I hope they do. it does change. But anyhow, uh, we watched The Departed. Uh, this did win Best Picture, uh, I believe, for 2006. Wait a minute, how do you have... I also have The Departed. Yes, uh, I have the special steel, steel book. Uh, what, you didn't version. pay for it? The steel book. Uh, good one, good one. Uh, but yeah, um, this movie was directed by Martin Scorsese, uh, who uh, most recently uh, directed uh, The Irishman in 2019. Uh, he also did uh, a movie called Silence, which I had never heard of, but evidently this, that was the movie that Scorsese wanted to make, uh, but made The Departed instead, and uh, that allowed him to eventually make that movie. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street, another movie starring uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, who is in this. Uh, Hugo. Uh, let's see. George Harrison living in the material world. I've never heard of that, but that's I've heard of the George Harrison, of course. I've got um, my mindset. Up Shutter Island. Uh, this is another movie we need to watch. Yes, with the Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes. Uh, no Direction Home, Bob Dylan. Okay. Mm. Uh, the Aviator, another one <laughs> with... Uh, uh. DiCaprio. I love movies about flying. Uh, Gangs of New York, uh, Bringing Out the Dead, uh, Casino. I actually, uh, I think I need to see I had that game for Atari. The Age of Innocence, Cape still Fear. Oh, another good one. Uh, the Good Fellas. I've seen that one. Uh, uh, Last Temptation of Christ uh, like with Willem Dafoe. I like the Good Feather. Uh, let's see, The Color of Money, After Hours, The King of Comedy, Raging Bull. We should have watched The Color of Money. Uh, oh, hey, New York, New York. Taxi Driver. I live in one of those. Alice doesn't live here anymore. Uh, and a few different other ones. But yeah, those are some of the most notable uh, Martin Scorsese movies. 
But uh, yeah, the, the movie stars, uh, like we said, Leonardo DiCaprio, as well as uh, Matt Damon, Jack Nicholson, and yeah. Mark Wahlberg, with Ooh. Martin Sheen, Ray Winston, Vera Farmiga, and Alec Baldwin. So quite a lot of famous names, uh, even a few others that weren't mentioned there, uh, including uh, Anthony Anderson in a, yeah, in, a, Anthony Anderson. In, a bit, in a smaller smaller role. Yeah, yeah, he popped uh, up a couple of times during the movie. And... Trying to think, was there anybody else uh, that uh, we we'd we would have uh, listed on there? I'm trying to think. Uh, I was most I was most tickled about Vera Farminga. Like the first yeah, time I... she popped up on screen, I didn't immediately recognize mm -hmm, her. Mm -hmm. And then by the next scene, I was like, oh, that's that's fair for me. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things I've watched. Evidently, uh, this was, uh, like, what jump-started her career from uh, what I was reading. Uh, this uh, she, uh, Originally, for the part, uh, Scorsese wanted uh, any number of other, uh, like, more famous names. And uh, apparently... Farmiga read uh, uh, opposite uh, Leonardo DiCaprio when they were auditioning, I guess. And uh, I guess that's what uh, got her uh, noticed for the part. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, basically, uh, the the movie is apparently a, a sort of remake of Infernal Affairs, which I'd never heard of before, at least I don't think. Maybe I'd heard it in passing. Uh, but anyway, uh, it is a story uh, about uh, modern uh, New York City, uh, Boston. Well, I say New York City. found out a lot of the movie was filmed uh, in New York City uh, because of uh, tax write-offs. But because of the movie, uh, Boston ended up, uh, Boston and Massachusetts in general, ended up becoming, uh, you know, a, a place to film movies. So that that's pretty cool. But anyway, uh, film takes place in Boston. It's about uh, Ir the Irish uh, gangsters uh, in there. And uh, it's a bit of a cat and mouse, or rat and uh, cat, I guess. A cat and rat. <laughs> Uh, as, uh, I don't like cats. As uh, rats uh, are mentioned uh, fairly frequently as a metaphor for uh, somebody who has infiltrated an organization uh, to secretly leak out yeah. information I to the other the, side. I think the audience, I think most people know what a rat yeah, is. Yeah, probably, but uh, since we're furries, you know, rat takes on a different meaning. and Like uh, Teddy. Yes, like Teddy, exactly, if Teddy's, Teddy's watching. A dead rat. Uh, uh, so, yes, indeed. So yeah, um, so in in this story, uh, there's the two pr principal characters are both uh, infiltrating the other side of uh, the law, and uh, basically it's kind of a, a race to for each of them to find out the the identity of, of the other, uh, and uh, you know it, it's it's a fairly long movie, but I, I feel like uh, it's it doesn't drag on like some other movies might yeah, where you're like oh know, man when is this movie gonna be over I the one movie that really dragged on was uh Tu Wong Fu with a lot Tu Wong Fu Julie Newmar yeah it's about drag queens oh oh really drag on. come oh, okay, on okay. low hanging fruit here I haven't seen the movie oh no okay we're gonna correct that <laughs> Uh, was it, did it get nominated for Best Picture? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I have a feeling like it didn't. But anyhow, uh, we'll, we'll try to check that out someday. Uh, or rather, I, I'll have to... Anyway, so no, yeah. Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, much better. I'd rather watch that. Okay. But anyhow, uh, so what did you think of the movie? I had, I had seen this uh, years ago. Uh, a, I briefly was in uh, community college and uh, a film appreciation class. I got to see this movie as well as L.A. Confidential, oh. which we talked about in a previous video. Yeah. Which was also nominated for Best Picture at never, one point. Never saw that one. L.A. Confidential, the one we watched with... Uh... Oh, that's right. I guess we reviewed it. Okay, I mean, you hadn't seen it until I showed it. Yeah, seen. yeah, that's it's but so yeah. new in my mind. But yeah, what, what did you think of this movie? I enjoyed it. It's uh, like, I, I get, uh, Martin Scorsese is the one who doesn't really care for superhero movies, or at least says that they're not cinema. But um, his argument in that was that they don't really keep you thinking after the movie's over, but his movies do. And I think that's pretty true, honestly. Uh, you think all the time, like, you know, what was going through this character's head, you know, like how crazy... Like a bully. Yeah, exactly, like how <laughs> crazy this situation is. Like, there's two informants that started off from different sides, mm -hmm. and, and it's it's just weird how close their lives were, but how infrequently they uh, they would encounter each mm -hmm. other, or... 
and like it's it's just neat seeing how everybody has this whole different world that uh, they see that doesn't always intersect with people they are closely related to and it was it's really fascinating honestly it's a very interesting movie and it keeps you thinking and I'll probably be thinking about it for a long time oh that's great to hear yeah. Uh, it is definitely a very R-rated movie. Lots of uh, lots of foul language and uh, violence and, and racist remarks. Oh yeah, uh, a lot of there's a, there's a lot of uh, like really really terrible slurs in this movie, but it's uh, also done to be accurate to uh, the type of people you know. Yeah. Uh, People, it's not glorified. Pe people in, uh, you know, uh, the, the corrupted law enforcement and, and crime, you know, they, they talk like this. They're, yeah. they're not, uh, you know, it's Mr. Not, Rogers. It's not, not an excuse. You're not just trying to say this is the way it was. They're mm -hmm. not, the people that are saying these things are not good people. Indeed. Uh, Jack Nicholson's character says it uh, says the most things, and oh, yeah. he's a terrible crime boss. So, a uh, uh, little, little fact I found out about that, uh, evidently, Jack Nicholson got to improvise a lot of his dialogue, which is very unusual for Martin Scorsese, <laughs> from what I recall hearing some time ago. Uh, at least I think it was him. That would explain some of the strange dialogue. But yeah, uh, like, especially all the scenes with Leonardo DiCaprio, evidently, uh, like, Leo didn't know what he was gonna do in a particular scene, they had like a rough, like, l like line of what's supposed to happen. But other, other than you know, knowing this is the direction the story's gonna go, Leo doesn't know what he's gonna say to him. So, uh, like, apparently there's a scene where he pulls a gun out on him, and that was a complete surprise to Leo. Uh, and I was like, yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty good way to to get a. You know, uh, a scared reaction out of the guy who is supposed to be intimidated by this guy. You know, he's uh, he's a maniac. He's a maniac on the floor. <laughs> no, okay, but yeah, he, he is. Like he is. He is, he is a, a very dangerous mob boss, and uh, he is nobody you, you know want to you mess with. And uh, yeah, he he's. In, he's in, infiltrated in order to try to uh, bring him down from the inside. And uh, obviously, to not get found out, or else, you know... <laughs> oh, or else he'd have uh, lemon juice sprinkled <laughs> across his neck. I understand. <laughs> I understand that. Because they'd like to drink at bars, and sometimes mm -hmm. they have stray lemons. Yeah, uh, have you ever ordered a cranberry juice... Uh... No, I don't really like bar. cranberry juice. Oh, okay. So until I, don't, I have something I don't wrong with my kidneys, I'm not drinking I do not, not know if it. I knew. <laughs> I find it has a very dry aftertaste, oh. not very refreshing. Okay. Plus, it's great for mixing with drinks, so yeah, yes. a bar actually would have it on hand. Yes, they would. Yes, they would. Uh, but yeah, uh, there is an early scene where uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character orders a cranberry juice and uh, gets made fun of for it. So he starts a fight with the guy as a... Presumably a way to like uh, get himself in uh, inducted into the the organization because you know they they want you know people who aren't afraid to to get dirty or to break the law you know uh, but yeah it, it's kind of one of those things like how much uh, did they like did the the police tell him of what to do and how much of this is just him coming up with an idea on the fly of, uh, of how to uh, ingratiate himself, you know? Uh, but yeah, evidently, uh, you know, it works, and he, he, gets, uh, he gets pulled into the, the world of crime, and uh, yeah. Killing crime in a future time. Uh, actually, in a modern time. Cops. Oh, okay. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, yeah. Definitely think this movie is worth checking out if you haven't seen it already, and uh, you know these sorts of things are, are your are your thing. Uh, how would you compare it to uh, *L.A. Confidential*, which uh, we we've reviewed before? Uh, yeah, I liked. Uh, you know what? I feel like *L.A. Confidential* was closer to a happy ending. Mm -hmm. I mean, neither one of these movies, big yeah. surprise, has a happy-go-lucky. Warm, fuzzy feeling ending. W would you say this uh, is at all like a noir? Or yeah, I would say it felt like a, a modern noir. Movie. Okay, mo okay, modern noir. I can I can take that. Yeah, like it's not all uh, what I envisioned noir to be. But honestly, yeah, I would say it very much feels like a noir movie. 
just uh, like you were saying, like, uh, like it is does like I, I think noir does typically have a happy ending, right? Yeah, a lot of, so, a lot of movies with a lot of depth don't have happy endings because that's not how reality works. Mm. It's not, oh, we did the thing, everybody goes home happy. It's like, no, a lot of terrible stuff happened along the way, and even if you win in the end, you're scarred for life. Oh, yeah, so, exactly. Like, the movie couldn't have a completely happy ending. There is resolution. Yeah, uh, um, now, now that you mention it, uh, yeah, the, the ending to L.A. Confidential, I would definitely say... Uh, is a lot more does, has a lot more of a resolution uh, yeah, compared to the other. There's a little bit of hope left at the end of that one, so I, I feel like. And whereas uh, this movie, it's just, well, it's all done. At least you're not nothing terrible is gonna happen again, or yeah, something life. like that. But yeah, uh, with all that said, uh, like I said, if 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 this is the sort of thing that you uh, think you'd enjoy, and you haven't somehow seen uh, The Departed yet. Uh, definitely would recommend you check it out. Um, but yeah, uh, hope you guys had a happy uh, St. Patrick's Day or continue to have a happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I will hopefully be uh, streaming uh, today. Uh, I have a poll that's up on my Twitter. Uh, that uh, In fact, you know what? I may as well release this video a few hours before the, the poll's over just so people can, uh, can see this. So yeah. Hopefully you're, you're seeing this before the poll's over. If you haven't, you know, check out my stream at twitch.tv slash Uh Currently, uh, JoJo's, Bizarre, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Eyes of Heaven is winning the poll uh, against um, South Park, The Fractured But Whole, doing the token experience uh, run, and uh, Dragon Ball Z uh, Kakarot, uh, which I have uh, not played uh, that or uh, the JoJo uh, game. And uh, the South Park one I have completed, but it's been quite a few years now. And uh, the one last trophy I have to do is play, beating the game on Mastermind difficulty while playing as a black character, which exactly. is the hardest difficulty. They, uh, <laughs> they, it's mostly it's mostly as uh, you know South Park humor. Yeah, uh, yeah. very but, uh, unapologetic. I'm I'm kind of curious if they've uh, changed the the title of the trophy to be the Tolkien experience instead of the token experience, as yeah. that was uh, what the name of the trophy was. Uh, but yeah, uh, that that would have been my uh, pick for for what game I, would, I was gonna play. But uh, you know, I figured I'd open it up uh, to uh, uh, one last poll since I I went through and picked out ones that uh, had had the most results uh, as far as. Uh, the d various polls that I had done before. So anyhow, uh, do you know what you're going to be streaming uh, tonight? Oh, Sugar Shack. Well, oh. um... Oh, goodness. I really wanted to get back into Final Fantasy, but nope, don't have a plan. Oh, okay. Just going to wing it. Ah! Probably ah. play something on Steam. Haven't done that in a while. So yeah, uh, so w whichever she ends up deciding to, uh, to play, uh, check her out tonight. Uh, Twitch.tv slash transitplayer. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, see you again uh, next week uh, for another video. Uh, not sure what it'll be, but uh, hopefully you enjoy uh, enjoyed this one. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed the birthday videos we did uh, last week. Yes, check them all out. Yes, indeed. So many videos, only so much time. Watch them before they're gone forever. <gasps> before they go back into the Disney vault. <laughs> Uh, I hope the Disney Vault never comes back. Die, Disney Vault. Oh, jeez. What's going on? <laughs> Why? What's happening? <laughs> what does this have to do with uh, St. Patrick's? <laughs> Bye, everybody!